morning, greater love. Yeah, and I say good morning. All right, all right. The devil tried to steal our joy, but we're not letting it happen today, amen? Amen? We were having a little technical difficulty, but we're here now. All right, all right. Good morning, family and friends. Welcome to our sanctu sanctu uh, cyber sanctuary. Where love is more than a word, it's an expression, amen? Amen? This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Um, I know for some of us it might have been rough, but guess what? I want everybody to know that hold on to God's unchanging hand. Amen? Amen? There's a song that says, you know, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. Amen? He is able. He's able today. So if there's anything you might be going through, depend on God because he is able. Amen? I just want everybody to know that even if you've been going through something this week, me, me, it's like I'm under the attack of the devil, but I know I'm going to keep God first. Whatever it is, I'm keeping God first. Amen? Amen. Uh, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Let us all bow. Lord, keep us from making the same mistakes we're most prone to when temptation comes. Amen? We confess that what we think is not necessary, smart, or personally beneficial is so often only the beautiful warning of sin. Mm. So please keep evil away from us. Lord, keep us safe from the pain and the grief that sin brings. For the dangers that I can't see or the ones that I think I can risk because of any of my experiences, my pride, my carelessness, put up a supernatural barrier, Lord. Protect us, Father, by your power. And Lord, keep us from the temptations that pull at our emotions and our physical needs, that call out to, um, to sense what we deserve, what we have the right to feel and enjoy. Because you are the true source of all that is uh, really life, amen? Direct our steps, Lord God, away from all that's not of you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Whew. When I was asked to speak today and give y'all some empowerment, is a stretch. But I pray and I say, God, what do you have me to tell your people? And he said, let my people know they have not because they have not. So, I went to the Word. I tried to do everything but that. Because I want to speak on this, that, and whatever. And the Holy Spirit said, no, you will not. So, the title for my empowerment is Speak the Word of Faith from God's Word. Word and watch it work. Okay? Believing in God is wonderful. But Jesus urged us to do one more thing. To speak the Word of Faith. To verbalize it. What we are seeking from God, we need to verbalize. Such a believer who understands the power of the spoken word of faith shall have whatever he says. Mark 11, 22 and 23 say, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever says unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he said. We see in that scripture there's four foundations. I said three at first, but then I thought about it. That's four in order to get results. First of all, we got to ask. We have not because we ask not. My grandmother used to say, a quiet mouth don't get fed. So number one says, first you got to ask. Number two, have faith in God. Faith in his word and in the promises of God. Faith in his son, Jesus. It's not faith in faith or in memorized formulas that give results, but it's faith in God. Number three, believe in your heart without doubt. You gotta stand on it and believe that, right? Number four, say what your mouth, what you believe, okay? Believe in God and his word is of greater importance, but Jesus encourages us further to articulate it, to speak it. Say it out loud. Whether we are, whatever we are believing God for, there's great power in the spoken word of faith. First John 5, 14 and 15, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if, he, if, if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask for. Uh, but I'm going to slow it down a minute and let y'all know we can't say anything and everything that comes to our mind. Uh, we expect God to grant it. We can't say, God, give me seven Mercedes Benz for seven days of the week. That's not God's will for us, most of us. I was saying it must be according to his will. And where is his will found? I'm glad you asked. His will is found in the Word, in the Bible. We can say with faith, Lord, I believe that you are Jehovah Rapha, the heal of my sickness. Because we find in the Bible God promises of divine healing. So vocalize it, articulate it, speak the word of God aloud. Don't just hold it inside. With your mouth confess God is your healer. There's a great power in the spoken word of faith. We can say with faith, Lord, through you I can defeat the devil and not be defeated by him. Because we find various New Testament verses declaring Jesus, declaring Jesus defeated the de devil on our behalf. We don't have to wonder what to believe God for, because if you look in the Bible, you'll find a whole lot of promises to believe God for. And when you find what God's word says about your situation, speak the word of faith over it. The word of God unlimited power. Hey y'all, he spoke the universe into existence. Now that's power. This seems simple, but the power is when the devil shows up and throws something out way, we immediately become fearful. This is something I've been working with, battling with. I have faith. I believe in God's word. But sometimes when things come unexpectedly, uh, my fear sets in. Pastor said Tuesday night in leadership class that fear is a reaction. And I thought about it. That hit home. It's a reaction. Pastor all said fear is an acronym for false evidence that appears to be real. 
and that sounds about right. Uh, for example, I'm gonna do it real quick. I know I'm on a time schedule. Uh, this little girl's going to school with my daughter, and uh, they both filled out their fast where they did everything. My daughter's come up clean bill, nothing. Come from a two-parent home, we probably could have came up with the money if we would just push to the limit. But hers came up with a $2,500 balance. And I say, Lord, God, what are we gonna do? Do me back a while. I'm like, what this baby come from a single parent home? What are we gonna do? And for two days I kept, I talked to my friend, I said, what are we gonna do? Talking to the wrong people, yeah. And the Holy Spirit told me, I shall supply all your needs. I said, oh, that's a need for that baby. I called that Friday. Them people went in, looked. They said, well, she filled out too late. I said, well, she filled out the same day my daughter did. She went back in. She said, ma'am, we're going to wipe that clean. We're going to give it to her. Yeah, he'll do it. So I say to you, once you have determined from God's word that which is in accordance to his will, we can confidently believe God for these things and speak these things with our hearts full of faith. When God has spoken on a subject that allows you to speak forth on that subject, the Bible is the word of God, and when we speak God's word, it has power. My question to you, do you have faith in God? You speak the word of God. Do you believe God's promises in the Bible are for you? Then speak them. Does the Bible reassure you that what you are believing for is according to God's will? Then speak it with confidence. My suggestion to everyone who's listening to me is to get into the Word and learn you some scriptures. Learn you some scriptures you can stand on. And when the devil comes, stand boldly and quote, quote those scriptures. Say, oh God, you said you supply all my needs according to your riches in heaven and God in, in Jesus Christ. Tell God, I don't care what it looks like, but I know what your words say. And I believe your word. I challenge you to stand on faith and speak the word of God and watch it work. Amen? And this has been your empowerment God.
Amen, amen. Fill me up, fill me up. I'm going to get ready to bring to you the house prayer. So I just want to bow your heads and let us pray. God, we thank you for your word on today. We believe this is a right now word for a right now season. We believe this world will impact our lives. I pray that our hearts will be open to receive the word of God on today. We believe lives will be changed, minds will be regulated, hearts will be fixed, and that deliverance will take place. We believe this word from you, Lord, will be life-changing. We know that after this word, our lives will never be the same. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, right where you are, begin to give God some glory. Begin to give God some praise. Hallelujah. This morning, uh, this morning was a perfect example that even the best made plan sometimes the devil can get involved. Amen. But if you just keep calm and give God the latitude to work it out. Tell somebody he'll work it out. He'll work it out. Let's look at the book of Nehemiah 1. Nehemiah 1. And I'm going to be looking at the first through the fourth verse. Nehemiah 1. 1 through 4. Nehemiah 1. 1 through 4. Um, for those who are in leadership, we've been... Uh, we've been going over the book of Nehemiah, so this shouldn't be, this shouldn't be foreign to you. Nehemiah 1, 1 through 4. And the word of God, it says, the word of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah, in the month of Kislev, in the 20th year, while I was in the citadel of Susa. Verse 2 says, Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men, and I questioned them. I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile are back in the province, are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and I wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. The earth withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord will remain forever. Father God, hide me behind your cross. Get Ross out of the way. This is your word for your people. Somebody needs to hear from you, God, on today. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Hallelujah. We'll be using for a short subject. I want you to Find somebody in your close proximity and I want you to tell them, don't believe the hype. Come on one more time, say, don't believe the hype. Hallelujah. Now if you're anything uh, like me, hallelujah, we used to, uh, there used to be an old public enemy song. And uh, don't ask me to do that crazy dance that we used to do, but it was, it, it was really crazy. Hey Amen. I think about uh, all of the crazy dances these kids are doing now, but that was none more crazy than some of the stuff that we was doing. Hey Amen. Hallelujah. I, I, whoever taught somebody how to do the wop? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. So we can't talk. Or the kid in play. Or the, oh, well, give me another one, Lisa. You know you did them all. The, the smurf, amen, the prep. All the real running man. Hallelujah. So, so we can't talk about these, these, these kids when they had this song, when that song came on, Don't Believe the Hype. Oh my God, we would just get super duper crunk. Amen. And everybody wanted to do that dance called the Flavor Flav. Have I got a witness? Y'all like that old. So, um, don't, but when I thought about don't believe the hype, I thought about the song and then I started to think about all that hype, all of that noise talking that the devil does, all of those fears that he puts in your head. And he makes you totally forget that we call those things that be not as though they were. He makes your faith um, sometimes take a back seat. That's why I told Lisa this morning that she was all in my message. And before the promises of God manifest itself, oftentimes oppression will always raise its head. Have I got a witness? And it's only for one reason, is to make you believe that it's not so. Tell somebody it is so. Most of, most of the accomplishments um, we've been able to achieve, it came with some opposition. Have I got a witness up in here? Uh, uh, somebody said that, watch this, watch this. Somebody said that I wasn't very good in school. Uh, you may not have been, but baby, you made it. Have I got a witness? Um, through hard classes and opposition and uh, haters and backstabbers, you made it. And uh, naysayers, have I got a witness up in here? And maybe even some backbiters, have I got a witness? And I often get nervous, I often get nervous when Satan doesn't attempt to get involved in something I'm involved in. It, it makes me nervous, it makes my nerves bad because, um, because when he, he only gets involved uh, have I got a witness? Um, he only tries to involve himself in purpose. So um, if he's not trying to get involved in something that I'm involved, it may not be identified as my purpose. Have I got a witness up in here? Never has the church been in a greater need of revival and never have we needed the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit more. Let's hop right off into this text because Nehemiah is a type of the Holy Spirit and his name, watch this, watch this, I got to teach you a little bit this morning. Nehemiah, his name means comforter. Say comforter. Nehemiah, uh, he was grieved that the wall of Jerusalem was broken down. And Nehemiah can also represent any, any believer who is in, uh, who is in harmony um, with the will and the purpose and desire uh, of the Holy Spirit for the church. I'm going to paint the picture this morning whether you like it or not. The wall represents the standard. Say standard. The power, the strength the character, the integrity of the church. I think I got to say that again. I, gotta, I, I told you I need to teach this morning. The wall that Nehemiah, that, that wall represents standard, the power, the strength, the character, the integrity of the church. Now the wall does, the wall does a few things here. The wall, um, the wall, it keeps things safe inside. Help me, Holy Ghost. It keeps things out. Have I got a witness? It preserves, it keeps safe. It keeps things, it keeps the right things in and the wrong things out. Have I got a witness? It protects, it keeps, uh, um, it, it keeps, it keeps bad things out. Have I got a witness that keeps the wrong things out 
watch this, and as Moses' mother placed him uh, into a little basket, um, she, um, watch this, daubed it, have I got a witness with slime uh, um, and with pitch, have I got a witness? Um, that was um, to keep Moses um, safe inside uh, and keep the water out. Y'all ain't gonna help me this morning. So when God told Noah, watch this, when God told Noah to build the ark, the last thing Noah did when he finished building it was to pinch it. Within and without. I'm just trying to paint the picture. Y'all gonna get with me in a minute. Number one, to keep his family and himself and all the animals safe on the inside. And to keep the water on the outside. And this was the last step before the boat, before the ark was ready to ride out the flood. But it was, mo but, but, but it was a most necessary step because it made the ark waterproof. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm getting ready to tell you how this is attached to your life. It made the ark waterproof. The higher the flood, the higher the ark. The higher the flood, the higher the ark went on top of the wall. Some of y'all don't understand that even in the midst of this pandemic, have I got a witness? Um, you haven't got a witness. You've been you 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 thinking about you 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 too busy thinking about all the winds and the waves. Have I got a witness up in here? Um, you don't even realize that God put you in a position uh, um, to ride this thing out. Uh, have I got a witness? Tell somebody. Uh, um, the wa the waters may be rocky, uh, um, but I'm riding this thing out. Hmm. Nehemiah, let me get back to Nehemiah, is, a no, is no doubt a book about revival. I can't hardly wait to get to y'all Tuesday night. It's no doubt a book about revival, about restoration about bringing back the glory of God to the church. It starts with an honest assessment of the brokenness and the hopelessness and the despair of a people who have lost faith. Tell somebody don't lose your faith. I'm gonna keep it 100 with you this morning because even Christians lose their faith sometimes. You know, you know, even, 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 even tongue talking, pew jumping Christians lose their faith sometimes. Have I got a witness up in here? Huh? Sometimes we put ourselves, we get in a position where there's fear and a hanamashanda in our mouth. Have I got a witness up in here? Hallelujah. Tap your neighbor this morning and say, I know you're a Christian. And you don't ever lose your faith. Don't believe the hype. <laughs> they had accepted their conditions as terminal. Hold on to that word. In other words, they have given up. They've given up their hope. They've given up their expectation for change. And they couldn't see past their present dilemma. And somebody needs to hear this today. You've been looking at some um, situations in your life and have I got a witness that have been labeled terminal. The lawyer says, ain't no hope, it's terminal. The doctor says there's no hope, this thing is terminal. The lawyer, watch this, watch this, watch this, the devil says it's terminal. 
Your enemies are saying uh, it's terminal. Haven't got a witness. And even your um, so-called friends are, are starting to agree. Haven't got a witness. You've been looking uh, um, at the broken down wall and it looks hopeless. It looks beyond repair. You can't see how God could ever put that marriage back together. Help me, Holy Ghost. You can't see how God um, could ever heal you of that disease. Help me, Holy Ghost. You can't see, have I got a witness, uh, um, how you're going to ever get out of debt. Lisa said it this morning, that was a situation that looks impossible. Her faith had received a challenge. See, before you can ever make, before she can even make the call to investigate a solution, fear rose up. Fear will have you not even making the call. Fear will, fear will have you never jumping out and stepping on faith, stepping out on faith. Fear will make you say, let's go see the lawyer before you even try. Fear, false, evidence, appearing real. You can't see how God can ever deliver that prodigal son or daughter. There were some people in the Bible in that same situation. Um, they were in the wilderness. They were dying of thirst. Have I got a witness? And the prophet told them, watch this. The prophet told them um, to dig ditches. Tell somebody I'm a, dig I'm a ditch digger. 2 Kings 3, 16 and 17, and he said, Thus said the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. Verse 17 says, For thus said the Lord, Ye shall not see wind, neither shall you see rain. Yet the valley should be filled with water. Somebody missed their shout. That you may drink both ye and your cattle and your beasts. And so the prophet told them, he said, you won't see wind or rain. Yet the valley will be filled with water. I think I need to say that again. Somebody missed their shot for a second time. You won't see wind nor rain. You don't make enough money. But you won't go under. You won't see wind nor rain. Yet the valley will be filled with water. And when they woke up the next morning, water came by the way of Edom. And the country was filled with water. And every ditch was filled with water. And I know right now, you can't see how God is going to do it. Help me, Holy Ghost, with this. It looks terminal. But I came to prophesy to you at 1108 this morning. That God, you hear me well on this, that God is getting ready um, to send some water. Have I got a witness? Um, God is getting ready to send some. Um, he's getting ready to send uh, some relief. Have I got a witness? Uh, um, the water is coming. and um, The water, have I got a witness, may be to you uh, um, some healing for your body. Uh, um, the water um, may be um, for you uh, uh, deliverance in your finances. Uh, um, the water may be. I don't know what it is for you. But God just sent me to tell you that the water is coming. Deliverance is coming. Restoration in your marriage. A breakthrough in your finances. It may be um, the end of a spiritual drought. I love online church because it reaches so many people, but I tell you what, it ain't nothing like being in the building. 
It's coming. Healing power is coming your way. Miracles are coming your way. Deliverance is coming your way. Nehemiah is coming. The Holy Ghost is coming with your answer. Somebody missed the third chapter. The Holy Ghost is getting ready to show up, Brittany, with your answer. And you, you, you haven't got a witness with your answer. Uh, with your Lord, how long? <laughs> with your answer. It's coming. So don't accept the enemy's report. Don't believe the hype. Have I got a witness? Don't even accept the report um, from um, your own stinking thinking. Have I got a witness up in here? Um, believe God's report and start digging the ditch. Believe God's report and begin to praise him. Um, have I got a witness right now? Why you have a chance? Have I got a witness right in the middle of your desert? Have I got a witness up in here? In the middle of your fiery furnace. In the middle of your own personal lion's den. In the middle of your pain. In the, have I got a witness in the face of a bad report? Just start digging ditches. I know you may feel right now that you're surrounded by broken pieces. Surrounded by voices of hopelessness. Voices of despair. But in the middle of that, I challenge you to dig a ditch. Take out the word of God and begin to declare the promises of God over your life. Nehemiah, have I got a witness? The Holy Spirit comes um, with a message of revival. Tell somebody it's revival time. And the part of the message is that um, it's not over. Now tell somebody it ain't over. <laughs> Have I got a witness up in here? Uh, uh, encourage your neighbor and tell them once again, say it ain't over. <laughs> Have I got a witness? Tell them it's not the end. <laughs> Have I got, it can be restored. <laughs> uh, it can be rebuilt. <laughs> and that's the word of the Lord. <laughs> Have I got a witness to you as well? <laughs> um, it's not over. <laughs> um, it's not beyond repair. <laughs> um, it's not hopeless. <laughs> um, it's not useless. And the devil would have us to believe um, that this is, um, this thing is an impossible thing. He would have us to believe if he can get away with it that you can never be healed, Ginger Gale. Your marriage can never be restored. The devil would have us to believe. Um, that this nation is doomed um, just because of the president. Put a, put a bug in your ear. And I think I said this before, I don't care if it's Democrat or Republican. Have I got a witness up in here? They all have an agenda. You just got to make sure that their agenda fits your agenda. Have I got a witness up in here? So the devil would have us to believe that the nation is doomed. That the nation is beyond help. That if, if, if Trump gets put back in, all hell is going to break loose. It's already breaking loose. And it was breaking loose before Trump. And it'll break loose. Have I got a witness after Trump? Have I got a witness up in here? And Trump is not more powerful um, than the power of prayer. And if the saints would get back together and begin to pray for who God allowed uh, uh, to get in the Oval Office, if we began to pray, good things can happen in spite of. If God can turn the heart of Pharaoh, he can he can turn the heart of Trump. Have I got a witness up in here? Hmm. He would have us believe that preaching, our preaching and our teaching and our singing is in vain. That the preaching of the cross and the blood of Jesus 
is the only uh, remedy for sin and hopelessness and, and purity and in truth and sanctification and all are just messages that are outdated and old school and they're powerless now have I got a witness but even in the midst of my contemporary thinking I'm still old school I'm so old school that I believe that the devil is a liar every time he come, every time he tries to contradict something that God put in place. Uh, I began to call him a liar. That's old school. And I began to tell him that it's not hopeless. I began to look him in the face and say, it's not useless. Even in the midst of a bad situation, I, I'm proclaiming that it's not hopeless. It's not useless. Uh, have I got a witness up in here? And, and there's no um, expiration date. Somebody's getting ready to get their forks out right now. Uh, um, there's no expiration date uh, on the blood of Jesus uh, and the message of the cross. Preach, Rose. The blood doesn't have an expiration date. Have I got a witness? The gospel is still the power of God to save all who believe. Say all. The preaching of the cross is still as powerful as it ever was. Isn't it amazing how millions and billions of messages have been preached on the same thing and um, the only thing that, 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 that makes it the same is um, when you're preaching about um, the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus, have I got a witness, and the power of the Holy Ghost. And I came to tell you that it still sanctifies and delivers. Um, it still gives us power uh, over sin. Um, God is still sending a uh, um, revival. Somebody should have got excited. Um, wherever the gospel is preached, uh, wherever the gospel is believed, uh, wherever the gospel is acting on, uh, opposition will uh, opposition will always have a God of witness will always come against uh, and resist uh, on the work of God uh, but greater is he um, that is within me um, than he that's in the world uh, and I came to encourage somebody uh, on today uh, and I wanted to tell you uh, um, that your labor in the Lord uh, is not in vain uh, I want to tell you uh, uh, keep on preaching the cross uh, uh, keep preaching uh, um, the blood of Jesus uh, uh, keep preaching uh, and standing up for holiness uh, uh, keep preaching uh, uh, righteousness uh, uh, keep preaching uh, uh, sanctification I'll uh, keep rebuking sin. I'll uh, uh, keep casting out devils. I'll uh, uh, keep healing the sick. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. Lift up your standard. Lift it high. And your work will be rewarded. The second part of Nehemiah's message was this. It's going to take some work. If it don't take no work, that means it's free. F-R-E-E. -E. And y'all know how we do it. We don't respect free stuff. We only respect stuff that have a got a witness that we have to put in some work for. Have I got a witness up in here? I don't want nothing free. I don't want nothing free. I don't want nobody just give me something. I want to work for it. Because when I work for it, not only do I protect it, but I respect it. Have I got a witness up in here? So it's going to take some work. Yes, we can have a revival. And we can have a mighty move of God. Yes, the wall can be rebuilt. Have I got a witness? 
But it's going to take some work on your part. Tell somebody it's going to take some work on your part. Revival is not a, re a random act of grace that falls unsuspectedly on random people from time to time as the Lord chooses. I'm almost finished, but I got to finish. Revival is a product. It's the fruit, the culmination of a cooperative effort of the Spirit of God and the people of God. Nehemiah, the Holy Spirit, wants to revive the wall. I'm back to the text. Nehemiah works with God's people to accomplish this purpose. I want to tell you this morning that revival is never an accident. Revival begins with a desire for change. Tell somebody, oh Lord, that's me, that's me, that's me. I want to change, I want to change. I want to change. I realize that everything about Ross ain't right. I want to change. I have a desire to change. And if you don't have a desire to change, baby, you in trouble. Have I got a witness up in here? If you ain't tired of your stuff, have I got a witness up in here? You in trouble. Have I got a witness up in here? If you can sit down and relax in your own stuff, have I got a witness? And your own stuff doesn't begin to have a stench. Um, you're in trouble. Uh, have I got a witness up in here? My grandmother used to say it this way, when you smell yourself, you've been funky. Everybody else know it. Now you the last one. Ooh. I better go put on some deodorant. Yeah. <laughs> We've been thinking the same thing for a while. <laughs> Sin is the same way. You're corrupted by it. You out there bad. People been talking about you. But you don't think you are as corrupt as you are. It's time for revival. It's time for personal revival. Nehemiah works with God's people to accomplish the purpose. Revival begins with the de desire to change. Revival begins when we're able to see and admit what, um, to admit the part that um, that the, the part that we don't like to admit is that I'm lost. It doesn't necessarily mean you're completely lost. You just got some foul areas in your life. Have I got a witness up in here? Uh, sin, I want to tell you this. As normal as it feels, Sin is not normal. Every part of sin is dysfunction. Have I got a witness? I told you I was going to teach you a little bit today. Mm. You got to realize that when you've reached a certain point, when you reach that part, that area of out of controlness. And you've got to realize, and you've got to choose to no longer accept this as normal behavior. I'm ready to cuss somebody out every five minutes just because they made me mad. Ain't normal. Had a problem with some folk. I didn't verbally cuss them out, but I probably did in my head. <laughs> but that ain't normal, TJ. I began to sit in my backyard and I began to pray for him. 
And when I began to pray for him, I felt a peace about the same situation that was causing me agony. And I showed up the next day and there was a peace that came with me. And that wave of peace, that wave of peace that passes all understanding began to rectify that situation without me even opening up my mouth. So sin is not normal. Broken homes, that ain't normal. Have I got a witness? Divorce and sickness, disease, idolatry, perversion, that ain't normal. It's not normal. It's not normal. It's not normal. Tell somebody my stuff ain't normal. Mm -hmm. my, my, my stuff ain't normal. Have I got a witness up in here? Revival is God. People pray. Revival is God's people fasting and sacrificing and laying aside uh, um, their um, flesh desires. Have I got a witness? Uh, um, revival is repenting, uh, uh, turning up, uh, up from your um, wicked ways and crying out to God. Uh, and God answered them. Uh, he, we, we can have revival uh, whenever and wherever uh, we're willing to pay the price uh, and do the work. Revival does not begin with the world. And we can't expect the world to get better until the church gets right with God. You got one amen to the right. That left side a little funny. How many remember to how many remember that, that the mess that you were in? When God swept in, picked you up, turned you around, placed your feet on solid ground. Uh, how, how many of you can remember um, and, and can admit it this morning, I was a hot mess. <laughs> Have I got a witness of it? I was a hot scorching mess. Have I got a witness of it? I was a mess. I was a mess. And those of you who can remember, have I got a witness that you was a hot mess? Uh, you won't criticize, have I got a witness, on um, the hot mess that comes in the door? Have I got a witness in just a few seconds? Have I got a witness up in here? Uh, how many of you remember uh, when you was wearing your club dress uh, uh, to the church? Have I got a witness? Uh, um, so how often do we forget uh, um, that we was a hot mess too? Uh, how many of you remember uh, when you had four, five boyfriends? Uh, um, yeah, baby, you was a hot mess too. Some of us was high and drunk. Some were unfaithful to spouses. Some were behind bars. Some were liars and cheaters, thieves and fornicators. Um, but whatever category you fit into, you fit into this group. Because we all was an ex something. Preach Ross. I, I'm gonna go on and close because y'all ain't feeling me today. <laughs> Have I got a witness? I know most of you. Uh, I know most of you right now. You're looking good and you're smelling good. <laughs> Have I got a witness? You got some money in your pocket and a little bit of money in the bank. Uh, most of you uh, drove here today uh, uh, on a pretty decent car. <laughs> Have I got a witness up in here? Uh, um, I'm, I'm looking at some folk and it looked like they eating good, but the truth is. You wasn't always this pretty. Tell somebody don't let the smooth taste fool you. There's some, the truth is, there are some scars behind this Mac makeup. There's some hurt behind this Mac makeup.
better take that mask off. I'm saved and I'm sanctified now. But I got a testimony of how men have abused my body. And the worst part is I let them. I got a testimony. I got a testimony. I got a testimony. I got a testimony because I, I, somebody may be saying I watched them, I watched them and because I watched things as a man, as a little boy, I disseminated that same personality on every woman I touched. Truth is I don't truly know how to love because I didn't feel like nobody loved me. I'm coming down your row in a minute. You got to keep it real sometime because people are coming. And you got to remember that you didn't always have it together. The truth is some of us and some of you have got some ugly stuff in your past. And that's why you're so petty. Because if I can point somebody else's dirt out, maybe my dirt is a little less visible. Oh, the Holy Ghost is speaking right now. Are you listening? The truth is, if God was looking for pretty, perfect people, You wouldn't have made the cut. I wouldn't have made the cut. I wouldn't have made the cut. I realize that God is not calling typical people. He's calling some not so typical people to a not so typical world um, for a not so typical situation. If God was looking for nice and prim and proper people who never did anything wrong, TJ, you probably would have been eliminated. If God was accepting, he was only accepting good people who never broke the law, who never cheated, who never lied, who never stole, who never abused their bodies, never been abused by somebody else. You and I would have been rejected, but God, God loved us. God had mercy on us. God forgave us. And I don't know who this message is for, but you need to, be, you need to start forgiving. The process of your healing starts with the process of forgiving. And I didn't say that you're supposed to forgive and reconcile. But you got to forgive. Because unforgiveness is just like you taking poison and expecting them to die. Remember, remember, remember all the things that God did for you. God didn't go down perfect street to choose his maternal. Help me, Holy Ghost. He came down to the rubbish. He came down to the heap and the trash piles of life. And he picked up the broken and, and the bruised. He picked up the wounded and the burned. He picked up the most used and abused. And he said, this is what I will use to build my wall. This is what I will use to build my church. I'll take these old, I'll take these old um, burned stones and I'll um, 
build a new wall and I don't care have I got a witness where um, you came from in your life or where you've been or, or what you've been through 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 one of my favorite scriptures it says therefore if any man be in Christ he's a new creature say I'm a new creature old things have passed away behold all things become new there's a spirit of revival that's coming to people who've cleared the way for it it's coming to a people who are hungry for it it's coming to a people who are desperate for it it's coming to people who dig a ditch it's coming to people who are rebuilding the wall, lifting up a standard, and I know things look dark and bleak and gloomy around us, and I might sound uh, uh, like a little crazy man, but I prophesy that revival is coming. The rain is coming. Suddenly, it's coming to those prepared places. Tell somebody I'm getting prepared suddenly is coming to where the walls are being restored it's coming where people have been digging ditches and crying out to God in revival revival is not a program that lasts for a week revival is continuous you ought to wake up every morning God revive me Tomorrow morning, God revive me again. I'm worn down. I'm worn out. I'm frustrated. I got anxiety. I'm confused. God revive me. Thirsty places. Wounded places. Broken pieces. It's coming with healing and uh, miracles and signs and wonders and deliverance and salvation. Sick bodies are being healed. I prophesy that right now. Sick bodies are being healed. Sick bodies are being healed. Sick bodies are being healed. Of the bound and the oppressed are being set free right now. The drug addicts, the prostitutes, the fornicators, the alcoholics. They're being set free. And they're being set on fire. Can you lift up your hands and your voices right now? Stand to your feet all over the building. And tell God we want revival. We want revival. We want revival. Cry out to God for revival. Come on, come on, come on. Open up your mouth right where you are. Revival for your church. Um, revival for your family. Revival for your city. Revival for your schools. Come on, let's prepare on the way for revival. Let's get all of the chunk out of our lives. Let's quit limping back and forth. Let's consecrate ourselves unto God. Let's build the altar. Let's put the sacrifice on the altar and God will send the fire. Let's build the wall and God will send the revival. I know that's a lot of things that I know there's a lot of things that's happening right now and now in our land. But don't believe the hype. If you need prayer right now, just type it in, type it in, type it in, type it in, type it in. I need prayer. Come on, don't be scared, don't be shy. Come on, type it in, type it in. I need prayer, I need prayer. I need prayer, I need prayer. I 
need prayer because I need power. I need power. I need prayer because I need power to withstand what I'm going through. Come on, type it in, type it in. I need prayer, I need prayer, I need prayer. I need prayer, I need prayer. I need prayer. I need prayer. I see you, Rocky. I see you, Danny. I need prayer. I see you, I see you. I see you, Charlotte. I need prayer. I see you. I see you. I see you, Minister Ginger. I see you. Hallelujah. I see you. I see you. Hallelujah. I see you, Michelle. Michelle Copeland. I see you. Jackie Ross. I see you. Demetri. I see you. Lift your hands. Lord, we need revival. Hallelujah. Revive us again. Revive us again. Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, begin to worship God right where you are. Right where you are. Right where you are. Right where you are. God, we believe this word has impacted our lives. We believe that when we apply this word to our lives, that our lives are going to be made better just by hearing the word of the Lord. Revive us again, oh God. 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 Hallelujah. Lisa, come here, please. you to place your hand on the stomach. Lift your hand.
personal revival for personal power. If you're here today, if you're here this day, if you're here today, and you said, I need, I need personal revival because I need personal power. We invite you to Christ on today. Please repeat the sinner's prayer with us. God, I admit that I'm a sinner. And I need to be saved. But God, you said if I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart, then I would be saved. God, come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and my personal Savior. Revival is happening right now. 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 Revival, 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 revival is happening right now. to give God a praise like you know you got revival and you got it going on right now hallelujah there's healing taking place right now perfect we're just trying to get that hallelujah I don't want to change the atmosphere I don't want to change the atmosphere uh, but it's offering time hallelujah we're gonna let you go Spirit of revival in this room right now. Revive us again. Lord, we need you. Hallelujah. God is about to do it. God is about to do it. You don't have to live with any sickness. God is about to do it. Somebody should have caught that word. I don't care how long you suffered with it. You don't have to live with it. You don't have to succumb to it. Hallelujah. The giving links are online. The giving links are online. Please support. Please support. Please support. We're going to stay in the same, in the same vein. But I want to start to give my virtual hugs. Demetra Howard, I love you. Minister Lee. Minister Ginger Lee. I text you this morning. Michelle Copeland, God bless you. Danny, I'm praying for you and praying with you. Love y'all. I miss y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deacon Curtis and Prophetess Kimberly Grays. Nanny Sylvia and Patrick Gallo. Hallelujah. Karen Williams Green and 
Hallelujah, Brother Craig Green, Sarah Richards, and my mother Odessa Marbley, Maria Graham, and Cornette, I will greet her, and Cornette Trips Crooks. She's in the house, she's in the house. Tequila and Julian Randall, they're in the house. Ginger Lee, Michelle Copeland, Demetra Howard, Jackie Ross, my favorite long lost cousin, Latonda Nunez, Rocky and Brandon are in the house. Miss Laverne Anderson, love you, Mama. Evelyn Oaks, love you, Mama. See you soon. The Silver Fox is here in the building. Alfred Graves, Sharice Jackson, Derek Williams, Sheila Phillips Jones, my sister Iris Bell, Etta. I think that's McKeevery. Ruth Kimball. Alexis, hey Lexi, Alexis Crooks, Tawana West Ellis, Gary, Alvin Crooks, Arthur Evans, my brother from another mother, Charlotte Mitchell, Danny Kendricks, Michelle, we call her Michi Hart, Rochelle Randall, hey mama, Ann Williams, Kiwi Lou, Danielle Evans, I hope I didn't miss anyone. Hallelujah. Ann Williams. Ann Williams, I got you. Strength and power. Prayer. Prayer. My prayers are with you. Hallelujah. Craig, you know I got you. Hallelujah. Karen, I got you. Rocky, I got you. Hallelujah. Rocky, the Holy Spirit just told me that you need prayer for strength, for unknown situation. But God told me to tell you that you got this. Hallelujah. God told me to tell you to remind you that you're more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Maria Graham, God's got you. God's got you. Mm. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going down to see if I missed anyone today. Revive us, God. Revive us. 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 stand to your feet right now wherever you are if you're at work if you're at home stand to your feet right now stand to your feet right now God give her strength God give her power God give her strength God give her power right now in the mighty name of Jesus I don't know if I called your name, but thank you for joining us. My God, my God, my God. I 
million men and then he said don't believe the hype hallelujah I don't want to miss anybody amen hallelujah we thank you for joining us on today we know you could have been anywhere else but you chose to be with us on today Mother Evelyn Oaks. TJ, is that your mother? God is getting ready to bring back to your remembrance something that you prayed about long ago, but you didn't think it was going to happen. God is getting ready to bring it back to your remembrance. And when you pray for it again this time, he's going to do it. but God did it anyway God did it anyway God did it anyway hallelujah God we thank you for sitting with us today we thank you for the Holy Spirit and God we thank you for your word hallelujah can somebody bring me the basket so I can pray for the offering God we thank you for the gifts we thank you for the givers. We know that little becomes much when we place it in the master's hand. Now, God, breathe on the finances of Greater Love Community Church. God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You didn't ask for it, but promotion is coming. Hallelujah. Have an amazing day. Have an amazing week. We love you, God, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.